do do do. Sunday fun day. Don't know if this is live still. No clue. These things are weird. Can't ever tell if these things are live. I can never see myself. It's so odd. It says it's live. There are people watching. No chat though, which is odd. What the hell's going on with this thing? Facebook's weird. Should just use Zoom. Whoa, there are people joining. Uh, we're waiting for Brett. Um, I gotta make sure everybody can like hear me and stuff, but we're waiting for Brett and some other people. Oh, yep, okay. Oh God, why didn't somebody tell me my mic sounded that bad? Ah. Welcome to Sunday Fun Day. Uh, we're waiting on Brett. This is lame and he's late. And yeah, it's his fault. How do I get in? I sent you an invite. Bam. Brett Singler. Look, oh, hey, hey, it's Brett. Hi, Brett. I am in. You're in. I am not late. I'm eight. I am. I am eight minutes early. That's true. That's true. I am early. We're waiting on Chris. I sent Chris a message too, because you got very excited about Chris recently. This is gonna be like the third time in a row Chris has come on. I have. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I have a massive echo. And there's oh. like a delay of about, am I, oh, you know why? Because I'm watching, hold on. I'm watching. Yeah, don't do okay. that. I was watching, waiting. Is it still there? Anticipating. No, I'm good. I, I just had to close. I was watching you. Oh. Uh, but I'm not anymore. Well, I am now, but I'm, I'm, uh, I closed the other window. So I'm all good. <laughs> all right. Cool. I am all good. So yeah, we sent Chris a message. Nothing, nothing. Like it's been a weird long day. I installed a mailbox. That was about it. Um, what kind of mailbox? Oh, it's uh, it's called a locking? Hampton something or other. No, it's not locking. It's like one of those ornate iron mailboxes. We get our mail stolen around here, so we um we need a locking one. I had to put neodymium magnets on this one so it would not fall open easily. But that's about mm -hmm. as secure as we get. I don't know what those are. But they sound, <laughs> they sound, uh, they sound they're intimidating. A lot of, they're a lot of fun to play with. So how do we, okay, how do we see like the comments just in case? So see call participants. Eh. We kind of have sucks, to monitor. Dude. Yeah, it's not this, great. this format sucks. I really yeah. liked what we did last week with Zoom, but it's, it's yeah. hard to get other people in. Yeah, when you use it Zoom. is. It is. They're, they have yet to resolve this uh, problem yeah. for us. I, don't know. I, feel like, I feel like Facebook should like designate a team just to help out. For the out. secret, yeah, just for this the one. Group. For Sunday Funday, we right? should have like a rep. Yeah. Oh, you That's know what? Total. We can monitor on our, yeah, we should have our, <laughs> our own assigned uh, customer service experience team. Yeah. So we can monitor on our phone, right? I think so. Uh, there's some so crates. Okay, so I'm definitely seeing some so crates. Okay, I got to turn off the. Nobody understands Bill and Ted, man. We're we're I will already. For, I will for dude, I will forever call it so crates. We're already getting tooled for pronunciation, and and yeah. technically it hasn't started yet. What is going I, on here? I think the easiest way <laughs> to like get it get ahead of mispronounce like being made fun of for mispronouncing greek words <laughs> is to just purposefully mispronounce them all that was the whole plan well, except you messed it up because you didn't know you were mispronouncing a few of them socrates you got socrates was funny yeah yeah the, but there was the, one that you did <laughs> there was one where we were we got pretty deep into the broadcast and you were like 
Oh, and I had to I had to text you and go, dude, that's oh Xenophon. Yeah, was I think Xenophon? well because it was been. like when <laughs> when me and JM first did the Boston episode, he tried really hard to like make sure we both knew how to pronounce those words, but they were wrong. Like, <laughs> and it was Th- Thucydides and Xenophon or oh, whatever, and it was I, still they were still wrong. Who cares? I mean, yeah. I I mean, I care. I do care, but it's more fun and funny. Yeah. to do it wrong intentionally than it is to get it correct. That's my that's my mantra with life. Like I can't I just I just googled like 10 Greek philosophers names and it's like Anaxagoras and Empedocles. Like I can't I can't even do it. I can't even what try. Is Pinocchio and Theo Theo later. I, I know Pythagoras. That's it. Fails of Miltus. All right. Um, These names. Okay, so we got a Barberham Lincoln. We got a Socrates. <laughs> uh, somebody hasn't, Kathy hasn't watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I think that deserves a seven day muting. Oh, God. In the group. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we need to like enforce these things, guys. Yes. Um, I, yeah, we'll definitely mute her not starting now. <laughs> um, Sorry, Kathy. You're not muted. Even, even Chris Preacher jump, like, didn't jump down my throat, but he was like, dude, you're not even pronouncing Apelles correctly. <laughs> what is Apelles? I tore my Apelles tendon. I think he said it was like Apelles. I don't know. Chris, ten- Chris said he like studied ancient Greek philosophy. Maybe he can. Oh, that. great. No. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm out. This is, I'm, yeah. I'm hanging, I'm hanging we're up. Just, we're just done. By the way, are we sure we want Chris on for a third week in a row? Hey, it's up to you, man. I mean. I'm good with it. It's fine. I'm going to flip a, I'm going to flip a coin. Okay. Just leave Chris. All right, he's paid. on. He's on. Nice. He's on. All right. Yeah, he made it. He's a good dude. And he makes us look. He is. Retarded. He makes us stupid. look retarded. That's I know. Means. That's yeah. really what I'm fearing here. <laughs> That's what I it's fear like most in life. Half half the stuff we were talking about last week, it was just Chris throwing stuff out, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting. I gotta look this up." And then Chris has moved on to like four different things. I'm like, "I have, I can't follow." Dude, I yeah. No These way. guys are intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, really I'm actually, my hands are sweating right now. You can't <laughs> tell. I have you margarita can't tell because they aren't, but they are. Um, I have some concoction here. Nice with the finger. Yeah. It's moonshine. Nice. Mm-hmm. I just came down to the south for a little while. Where is yeah. Chris? I, don't I should know. put I could put the invite link in the comments so if other people want to come in before Chris, they can. If you want, we'll just do that. Um, sure. Oh, he you All know, right. he could be struggling. Like I normally do. Just kidding, Kathy. We love you. Oh, it's not giving me the... Uh, Dude. It's not even giving me the room link anymore. We might might have to go back and do this via Zoom. Because, like, it's not even giving me the room link. I don't even know if... Can I invite somebody? Maybe. Do I need to invite him? Let's see. I, 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 I mean, I can see it in his oh, messenger did. thing, and he hasn't seen it enter, yet. So Enter full screen. Whoa. Let's go back to not full screen. Um, okay, exit full screen. Um, let's see. Right yeah, click. Okay. Right, right clicking usually gets people in here. You know, the other thing that sucks is if he doesn't join us within like 13 minutes, it cancels the ability to, to join. Does it? Yeah, I tried to join you guys uh, last week. I'm like, dude, I want in. And then it, it said this link expired. I have a I have a link. I was able to copy a link. Okay. So I have it, and I can put it in the comments. That's a long-ass link. Let's see if that works. Bam. Yeah. Hey, I am. Let's see if anybody wants to pop in. I don't know everyone. Steve Steve Yoakum 
says, I don't know anyone, or I don't know everyone. Who are you? I know Steven. George, sorry. I might have missed the intro. Uh, this is Josh Cornell. Joining Hi, guys. Um, I'm Josh Cornell. Uh, I have about 15 years of experience uh, searching for casks all over the planet, uh, namely uh, in Albuquerque and Seattle are where yeah. I'm pretty sure there's some casks. Four um, or five. If, uh, if I do connect with you <clears throat> and, we, and we plan to like meet up, I will need to crash on your, on your couch. <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind. Probably going to be buying me some beers too. I'm just, <laughs> uh, no, I'm Brett Zingler and I actually, uh, Steve and I got in a fight on, um, on the group today. Oh, Steve who? Yoko. Yoakum? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes. You guys are going to fight now, too? Uh, I would like to, uh, although it would be pretty one-sided. Um, <laughs> it would be pretty, pretty one-sided because he's not in here. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you could be the winner, But those are the best though. fights. Those are the only fights I win when there's no you know other you're, participant. You know you're an admin, right? You can just block people. Hey, um, if you want, hey, I wrote a, uh, I wrote, uh, um, as is tradition, I wrote a, I wrote a song for um, today. Okay. Should we wait for Chris? He does have or the guitar. Not. He does you have make guitars. Him play the guitar. Yeah. Oh, it says he's here. Does it? Yes. Oh, Steve Yoakum, like Scott. You know what? We are fighting. Yeah. I think you missed that. Did you miss that whole exchange? I did. Well, I saw like, I saw something and I removed a post. Um, like early today, I had just woken up or something, oh. and somebody was like, "Byron Price fucking sucks" or something like that. I forget what this it was, but it was like, hoax. yeah, yeah, it was. It had like four f words in it, so I you just deleted are, it. You guys are, I know, Steve. I'm kidding. I, you have to understand. I'm everything I say is pretty much bullshit. So, Steve, you're great. I like you. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I get in. Yes. No, no, no. Steve, I got it. We're friends. You and I, we're good. And my name is Josh Cornell. Yes. Um, no, I got up this morning, and I, I was checking out uh, the, the thing and uh, the, the group, and um, I see this post, like, I don't even remember exactly what it was. Something like... Um, uh, hey, uh, do you guys, is was there even cask? Uh, I I think this guy just liked to paint art, art and Jimmy Jack us around. You know what I mean? Like basically mm. calling the whole thing a hoax. Fine, okay, you know. And then, but then people started calling him out on it, and then he and then he backed off of it. And then I call, I go, dude, you're either you're either calling this a hoax or you're looking for information but you can't have it both ways. You know what I mean? You yeah. can't like back off of it and say, oh, it wasn't a hoax. So anyway, it was kind of, it just, he turned into like, there was some swearing, which is fine. I love swearing, but not at me. Uh, um, and then, so I just shut the whole thing down. Uh, Chris says I'll be here in yeah. two minutes. Uh, Luke, okay. Mike had a good idea. Instead of Josh Cornell, you should have been Josh Gates. So how's the new season coming, Josh Gates? Well, uh, let me tell you about the new season. So what I've done is decided to change the format up a little bit. So this this year, we are going to be, uh, or this season, uh, and stay tuned for episode one because it's a doozy, we're actually going to be uh, uh, straight up live digging up uh, grades. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> should I not? I'm not going to pursue that one. I'm sorry. One one year for uh, like April Fools, uh, I would love for Josh Gates to just come out and be like, "We've changed the name to show to Expedition Known. Today we're going to the grocery store." Right. <laughs> we're just going to do stuff that we already know about. It's going to yeah. be super exciting. We're going to take a clip, or a, a trip to Washington and see <laughs> some like. We're going to go to the Space Needle. It's very well, well known. Welcome to Expedition Known. We're going to go to the most known things on the planet. Number one, London. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 
Man, I hate killing time before our special <laughs> guests arrive. This sucks. It's fun, at least. I don't get, it is. Don't get to do this enough. Dude, you and I don't talk anymore. No. This is, like the, this is the longest I've talked to you in like two months. I feel like you hate me now. I, I mean, you know, Just a, I don't. No, not, no, but not I'm anymore than... At, I, I'm good at acting like I do. Yeah. We need That's to play another game. Like me, you, and Bradley. We got to get together oh, and play that another was, game. That was fun. That was, we did that one time on Steam. Yeah. And then and we go, this is amazing. We're doing this every night for the <laughs> whole pandemic. And then we never did it again. We never did it again. Why? Because I'm on friggin'. Can I swear? Yeah, I don't care. I'm on freaking um, Zoom all day, every day. And the, 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 you know what I mean? And then it's like six o'clock at night. Go back on Zoom. Wanna, I don't want to go back on Zoom. Zoom yeah. sucks. Yeah. I can't, dude. I couldn't say, I couldn't have your job. Trying to convince um, people to buy things on Zoom. Uh, on Zoom. <laughs> oh, look, Chris is here. <laughs> it's like, it's like, hey, Chris. Yeah. It's like um, it's like having my own. What do they call it? QVC or shopping channel? Basically, yeah. that's what I do all day. Is I sit hey, on Chris Zoom and try here. to sell things. Sell Brett or Brett? Sell Chris some shit. Uh, well, you just missed Chris. Buy uh, this pen. <laughs> oh, it's an interview now. <laughs> I, you just missed the first season of Josh Gates. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, season known um, or things unknown? Destination uh, unknown. Expedition known. Destination known. <laughs> Where we visit totally known things all season. It's going to be amazing. Speaking of that, I got to finish that series of stuff, the Chicago and Cleveland. I got to do Boston next, and that's going to be Dude, hard. How the hell are you going to do that? I have no idea. <laughs> are you going to get a backhoe and reenact uh, the whole thing? Because that's, oh, really that's really how it was found. There's nothing I can say on that that won't piss like everybody <laughs> Everybody's gonna get pissed, dude. Don't do it. Uh, Just skip it. I pissed. I kind of. I kind of upset Andy. Did you see that, Brett? The Andy thing. He was. No. He was like. He was like. Don't you know, George, upset Andy. He was like, you know, George. I, I really. I really like the puzzle, and I didn't just accidentally find the cat. <laughs> oh. Is that? I didn't watch it. That's how busy I've been. Did you say they accidentally found it? Well, and I said I said Andy found it because he was bored, and he was like, "No, it was a little more complicated than that." And then I said that I, I said, and once he found it, I was like, "And that's how the guy who really didn't care about the puzzle became the cast finder." And he's like, "You know, George, I really liked it. I really liked the puzzle." Okay. He's like, "It wasn't an accident." Um, and then and then Brian came in, and he was like, "It wasn't easy either." <laughs> I, you know what the best part of that solve is, besides them getting a cask, is those little fluorescent pink uh, shorts that, that Brian's in is wearing. In the, in the, yeah, I, I those are those amazing. Too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I love those shorts. And there's only one guy on the planet that can get away with them. It's, and right. it's him. It's Brian's in. Yeah. It's Brian's in. I don't Did know if they're, know, are they pink or yellow, but anyway, they they're, were white. they're awesome. Okay, you know, they're awesome. I I walked into Brian's house and in his front, in his living room are two giant columns, like on the side, like his TV is in the middle of these two giant columns. Rad. And I was like, I told him, I was like, you're taking this Cleveland shit way too seriously. He's like, I never <laughs> even thought, I never put two and two together. Like, sure. You Seek bought this the house for the columns. <laughs> Seek the columns. Hey, Chris, what's up, dude? I've never met you before. I'm, I'm a Josh Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've we've been talking for a couple of years now, but yeah, I've never actually seen you face to face. Josh Cornhole, well, Josh Cornhole, Corn, Cornhole, Cornhole. Cornhole. Cornell, Cornell, Cornell. Um, yeah, I know, dude. You and I talk quite a bit and try to solve some puzzles together, and um, it's good to see you face to face. And I love the guitars. Oh yeah, Brett was gonna sing a song. You're supposed to play. You don't have to, but you only <laughs> need to know sing a song. You only need to know two chords. Yeah, I'm only doing it if it's Journey. <laughs> I, want, uh, um, I want Brett to bang out some some Journey someday. We got to get is, Evan Hoovler for that one. Yeah, dude, he's he's got the pipes. Yeah, I got the gripes. He's got the pipes. Um, I, no. I've, I've heard your music. Oh, get out of here. Okay, so I dude, wrote you this. do have good music. Like, have you Thank heard you. his old band from when he was like in college? It sounds like uh, sound. Only, it's reminding me of Soundgarden. 
That was like three years ago, dude. What are you talking about? Way <laughs> back when I called him, we were, we were all... a grunge Steve Perry. That's why I make yeah. the uh, make the journey references. I will take grunge, <laughs> and I will take Steve Perry, and I will take whatever you want to tell me. Have you, George? Have you heard yes. Chris's music? I have not. Hell yeah! <laughs> it oh, is. You're in the band. Hell yeah! That's awesome. He's in hell yeah. Uh, it way more is, than that. Oh my god! <laughs> it is. Uh, it's insane. It's intense and blows anything I could ever do out of the water. I've never been talking about music to Chris. Like uh, the uh, only thing I think we ever talked about was like ambient weird music. Did yeah, we talked about music. We talked a little metal at one point. Oh, okay, yeah. You sent me a picture of your family at like a Watain concert or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other, the great. other, the other downside. Okay, so Chris, uh, we were saying before you joined that um, we're intimidated by you. Yeah. Uh, number one, number two, you have an awesome memory, and that also sucks for us. <laughs> Because we'll repeat the same things uh, over and over to you, and you'll go, dude, you told me that 15,000 times. Okay. And, and uh, I can't right. even remember. I told you we went and saw Watang. <laughs> I guess Wu the memory Wu comes in good with, uh, with puzzle solving, right? Got to remember all those clues. Dude. Yeah. Which is why I suck at it. Um, yeah. Okay. You guys ready? Okay. So I spent two days writing this for this oh, particular, wow. for us getting together tonight. <laughs> And it's an original oh, Brett Zingler, and it's for, for this. Okay, ready? <clears throat> I don't know. Sunday, fun day, ma, 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 it's cool. Sunday, fun day, it's so good to me, yeah. That is our new theme song, Sunday, fun day. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> I wrote Cornell. that myself. I wrote the melodies, all the mu the the backing vocals, the guitar parts were very oh, complex. Nice. Send me the send me the snippet of the audio. <laughs> please don't. We'll get chilled and mix up something good. Please don't, please don't send that anywhere. Um, yeah, this piece of paper is blank. I was, I was just blank. <laughs> okay. Um, so, are you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Sure. I think. What are we doing? I know it's just your idea. Uh, mine? <laughs> yeah. Mine? Uh, okay, so Chris put up something uh, interesting today that we could talk about on, um, and that's in your, uh, in your guys' Facebook group, but you cross-posted it over into our group, right? That's where the original, uh, so we, people know where to find it so they can look while we're doing this. It was a blog post, and then I just, sometimes I'll share them in the, in the main group there. Okay, blog post, what's the blog again? How do people find um, this? It's, you can go to the secret spirits and other sh with three H's.com, or you can go to the secret of the secret.com. Okay, all right, or, or do like a search on our, on our page and you can find it, right? Yes. For, for yeah. of your name or something like that. Okay. Yeah. George, uh, George updated the branding last week. Oh yeah, there's, now, a, there's a link on 12 treasures. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sweet. So people will know what we're talking about. Um, it, uh, so anytime you bring up San Francisco, I'm going to be obviously interested, but I thought this one was particularly good. Um, what you guys put or what you posted or what, tell us who came up with it. What is it? Give us, give us the, give us the goods. Um, well, I mean, it, it came out of just, we talk about this stuff nonstop and what ends up happening is you just gloss over something for so long. And I forget how it came about, but we someone put that picture up and I saw the word trademark and all of a sudden in my head I went, oh shit. Hmm. The uh, like cause because I know that we've talked about object of attention being the steamboat, being a newspaper. I've, I've heard people say a pen, like right. a book, you know, all these things that are, you know, something specific that Twain would have been an object of Twain's attention, literally. And I, just seeing that, that building and that 
those words trademark, I was like, oh, Mark's trade. Mark's trade is the object of Twain's attention. And, you know, that was, that was really all it was just a, a little riddle. Um, so, and, and so where do you pull the, uh, the, the, uh, a trade being an object of attention? First of all, where does that come That's, from? Well, the definition of, well, what I do is I'll look at synonyms of stuff, definitions, that kind of stuff. Um, so object of attention, if you look at synonyms, it's all about hobby, job, um, occupation, mm -hmm. vocation. Mm -hmm. So a trade is a vocation. That's awesome. Um, I, uh, that's one that I, uh, that piece of it, uh, this Twain thing, I, I think that that's a crucial piece of it. Um, it is. this particular verse, right? Because I feel like if that gets solved with some level of confidence that, that the whole thing will come together. Well, it will directionally orient us, whatever, whenever we narrow down what the object of Twain's attention is, we know that the jewel is in that direction. So go towards it. Mm -hmm. we, uh, and so which direction would you go from there? Depends. It depends where you're standing. Or is that thing telling you where to go next once you're at a place? My opinion of it is similar to Chicago, how these like certain spots get called out, right? So mm -hmm. it's not, not saying it's a path, um, but just that there is a progression of things being called out that if you go from the symphony hall to the intersection of Congress and whatever street that is where the, where the, the Bowman is to Lincoln to left beyond Lincoln's shoulder, like all those things are getting called out sequentially. So if you're standing at Lincoln and you're told to go left beyond his shoulder, so think of it, I kind of think of it in the same way. If I'm at a place and I'm told to go in the object, in the direction of the object of Twain's attention, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And then you're sense. looking for a giant pole and a giant step around there somewhere. Potentially. 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 Um, I always thought, so I like this. Um, I think it's a cool, I think it's very apropos to how Byron wrote these things and what you were saying before, like, you know, seeing things on the side of a building and incorporating some wordplay for that thing into the verse very um, cleverly would certainly, certainly, um, you know, be, be, uh, be appropriate. Um, I thought, and I, maybe I told you this before, I always thought um, object would be either um, top of the mark Mm -hmm. I'm not the one that came up with that. I know a lot of other people have talked about that over the years. So top of the, top of the mark there, which is the top of the Mark Hopkins Hotel for people that aren't that familiar with uh, Knob Hill there. And then the other one I thought um, was uh, when Twain called, uh, is it from, um, from his abroad book when he called Grace Cathedral um, like an object of, an, of attention? Yeah, it was the cathedral in Milan. Right. I liked I liked that one too. I thought that was good. It it's on brand with some of the other um because what is that? It's called like Innocence Abroad. Innoc Innocence Abroad, yep. Yeah. So it's like yep. I mean it's on brand with Abroad in America. Mm -hmm. It has the words used, but um it's a hot it's a hot take. That's a hard one to find too. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a hot take. It's yeah. also kind of like, eh, not quite sure, you know, but um, this, this one is kind of my favorite now. Thank you. Yeah. So where are you going to dig? <laughs> still, <laughs> still, still probably shouldn't make it. him talk about that one. Oh yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not there yet. I, okay. I'm, slow, I'm a slow mover. I don't like jump straight to the dig <laughs> spot and claim that I've, I sold it on, on my first go, but um, I'm working. I'm working towards something. Oh, oh really? What? Cool. Well, 
sort of. I, I sent it all, most of it to you in a Facebook message that you seem to ignore until I've made it a blog post. <laughs> <sighs> um, I'm having audio, <laughs> audio and messenger problems right now. Oh, the screen is flat. Oh, Chris just disappeared. Oh, well, that's because I kicked him out. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Um, you did? Yeah, he did. Last, last week. <laughs> or two weeks yeah. ago. I don't know. All right. We'll put a pin in now. We'll come back to it. Bro. Sorry. The, so the trademark building is what, like two blocks from Dragon's Gate? Uh, it's one? Two. Grant, one. Right? It's Grant, it's, California. It's California. Yeah. So it's, it's like, ca trademarks I mean, on California and Grant. California. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's like two right blocks. There. Two blocks two down blocks the hill. Down. And does it still say that on the building? I didn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it okay, does. God, that's great. It's it's good. Like I mm. still really like Dragon's Gate. I think Dragon's Gate is awesome. Yeah, but that coupled with that that building and the cat the cafe house included in that, like it's it's crazy that all of those little things that seem so concrete are compacted into that tiny little area. It's just a couple of city blocks, you know, and one street, a, a couple familiar. of city blocks. Yeah. Yes, it does. Right, I'm gonna go. I got to go look at this um, uh, live. Okay. Don't talk about anything else I send you. You're oh, looking at it. We're not, we're not there yet. But okay, I wasn't going to look at that. I was just going to look at the the, oh, okay. uh, the trademark the, thing. the building. But yeah. Yes, the building. I want. Yeah, I I, I, I actually I re, I I, re, I remember this conversation, Brett. So I think I can steer you away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this conversation, and I remember reading this and going, I don't know if Brett's going to want to talk about that. <laughs> Dude, okay, that's probably why. Do you guys remember when I was in college? Because I don't either. <laughs> um so that's dim sum corner yeah it's the right. um isn't it the the north west yeah corner? it's dim sum corner that's the uh, it's a historic building called the cafe house it's been the cafe house since forever it's called the, it's called the sing chong building yeah um, well, and like the a... one across the street is called the sing fat building is it called cafe house too the restaurant inside is called Cafe house. I don't know if that that's, was there. That's what it is. I'm not it, sure, was. it was. I have been there forever. I have, I have researched since. that. It was there. Bam. Dude. It, it changed. So the Cafe House changed owners and changed names a couple of times, but now it's the Cafe House, and back then it was the Cafe House. It, it, it sort of changed sort of in the, in the middle of that, but it was then and it is now. And that, that um, say, is it, what is it, St. Mary's? Yeah, the old St. Mary's. The old St. Mary's right on the corner, right? Mm -hmm. Right on the Yeah. Wow. Okay. Dim sum corner. Could be could be good. Could be pretty good, guys. Could be pretty oh, interesting. I yeah. I don't I need we we need a poll around here though. I... Just, just... <laughs> don't say anything. Yeah. Um uh cool. Well, uh, do we have any questions about this? Who wants to ask a question? I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought you did. Um, Shania Twain wants to ask a question, and she's jealous that you aren't using her name as part of your interpretation. Uh, of course. So if you could go ahead and answer that, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be fantastic. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, what else? What else? Um, I'm trying to look for questions in the thread. It's weird. Got, like we've got, got like 86, we got like 86 questions here, but the way Facebook is working right now, I can't see any of them. Like it used to be a live, there was a live stream of the questions that you could scroll up and down, but now it's just like, I can't, I, I don't know if they changed something, but I can't see really any, I can see like four questions and they've all, they're all stuff that's been there for like 15 minutes. You can change it to all comments instead of it might I, be set to like newest or, or I can't I, like in, in the format they're giving me, I can't change that. I know what you're talking about, but it's it doesn't yeah, give me yeah. that option. It's weird. This is why I went to Zoom. 
Yeah, I was surprised she went back to the the messengers after last week, but I thought it would be easier for Brett. I didn't know. Oh yeah, he, him and technology don't get along, right? I'm I'm challenged on many fronts. Yeah. Well, see, the singing, thing is, like singing, especially if it's on Zoom, it's hard for other people to join, right? Mm-hmm. And and this way, I can just throw out the the link. Oh, oh, let me do that again. I'll just throw out the link in case anybody wants to come in. Um. But on Zoom, it's it's more difficult. I mean, I can still throw out the link, but then, like, I don't know. Bradley told me not to do that for some reason. I have no idea why. So, Steve, our friend Steve Yoakum says, why do you think that people have to overthink that? It seems simple and right on, but they do, right? Chris, you had some pushback, right? Um, I mean, there's always pushback. Everyone's got their own theory. And if you put something out there that doesn't align with their theory, their response is generally to say, well, this is what I think. Diss you? And that's, well, I, well, I mean, there are certain people that love to diss me and they're welcome to do that. But I don't think anything in, in the comments today were were diss it was just people being like well my perspective is this and that fits into their theory but it doesn't fit into mine so i don't know how to help them with that but i feel like when you when you've got good ideas they challenge like really passionate people's ideas to the to the core of those ideas right and that causes them to fight back harder and they tend to make it a little more personal at least that's what i've seen so that was a random comment but whatever Appreciate it. No, we'll take it. So that's um, definitely the cafe house. <laughs> Sorry, back to yeah. back to what Chris was saying. I see it here. I'm looking at it, looking at it on Google Maps. Um, what's across the street? Did you say from the cafe house? Oh, yeah. the Sing Sing Fat building. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Isn't it- Wait, which one is that? That's not the church. Is that just the little tiny nondescript building that's across the street? Yeah, it has the oh, it's similar, got another big like, tower, yeah, yeah. Building yep. tower yeah. top thing, yeah. It's not as pretty as the the Cafe House building, but whatever. It's got a top. You can definitely see the top of the mark from here. Yeah, you can see uh, right up that hill. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. And then where's the dragon from here though? Is that like a street down? Or you have to go the other way. Two, two blocks south. Two, two, two blocks, yes. Yeah. South, okay. I'm heading down there right now, guys. Cruising down the street. You got a 6-4? <laughs> I, I have a 6-5, which is even <laughs> better, dude. Up. It's so much yeah. better than a 6-4. It's got the air conditioning. <laughs> and a 5.0. <laughs> and I put the top down so my hair can blow. That's what happens. It's so, going on Google Google Street Maps is so weird because you stand in front of that building and there's nobody there, and then you go down a, a block and there's nobody there, and then you go down another block and there's a thousand people standing in front of this <laughs> gate. <laughs> so like yeah. I just want to see the gate. I've been finding that people really love to upload dash cam videos to YouTube. Yeah. So I've been watching a lot of like late seventies and early eighties dash cam driving through San Francisco. And it's like, it's, it's the same thing that we do. It's like clicking through Google maps or I just like sit back and let someone do the driving and try to see what I can catch. That's nice. Sadly, we don't have anything like that in St. Augustine. Nobody cared about driving through our yeah. city, I guess. Such a historic city. Uh, it's probably you don't want to ruin home it. Home videos. Stuff. Yeah, you don't want to ruin it with YouTube feeds. <laughs> like no, we want to ruin it with Starbucks. That's what we want to do. It's like desecrating it. Well, I um, mean, it's, Starbucks is green, right? So it's on brand for the city. Yeah, but not in the middle of St. George Street. <laughs> Just kidding. Right down St. George Street, there's a Starbucks, there's a Ben and Jerry's. Whatever. Okay. Um, so Debbie, uh, I'm going to say Koenig, but it could be Koenig. I've seen it pronounced, pr- pronounced that way before. Um, it seems, it seems like most clues or markers are within a few blocks of each other or can be seen at that point. Do we, do we agree with that? 
Are we talking about just San Francisco or for all I, of it? I think she means most like what she's experienced through the through other solves, possibly. Uh, the Wright Brothers Monument is like 15 miles from the Elizabethan Gardens. So I would say no. Yeah, like for all it, uh, Nailed it. I would say that might be true for the ones that we've seen solved, but that doesn't mean it's going to be true for the ones that haven't been solved yet. And, and, and we go back to, is there, is there some simple formula for all of these where they're all going to be solved by one particular way, or are they all totally disparate puzzles, right? So it's hard to like take the learn, you know, it's not that hard to take the learnings from something because he's going to use some of the same mechanisms, but the distances could be different, right? Or the um, things can be different. Things can be yeah. different. That's why some are harder, some are easier. It seems like a lot of the resolution is the same. Um, a place, a street, a thing on a building. Yeah. But the how you different. resolve it is different in all, yeah. in all of them. So they're giving us the same information, just in different in ways. In different ways. Hmm. Hmm. So it's using the same techniques. They're just mixed up differently, is what you're saying. Yeah. I would say they're, giving, they're using different techniques to give us the same information. To give you the same information, right. So, so in other words, you're saying like Chicago, <clears throat> the information that was used by Rob and his, and his uh, crew in Chicago, the information is probably usable in different formats elsewhere. It's just the technique that it's being conveyed to you is different in the in the verse and the and the pairing. Well, well like when when uh, Byron says and to Congress in Chicago and then uses the Liberty Bell in Cleveland, it's both a way to give you a street, but it, I mean it's two different ways to give you a street. Same as like if if Byron was <laughs> using the witch to tell you Salem in Boston, it's another street. So. Three puzzles, three streets, three different ways. Very cool. Um, so, and then Debbie says, yes, uh, from the solves that she's, she says that uh, uh, she's uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee seems like a from long puzzle. Seems, it, doesn't that seem like a pretty yeah. far distance to get between? That, uh, although that, we don't that, really know. That, I was gonna say like the two puzzles that seem like the longest travel is Roanoke and Milwaukee. They're the only puzzles that have like directional clues, like go past three or four or whatever of these. You there know, are a lot of lines too. Like yeah. they're they're the longest ones. So. Um, do you guys want to hear the names of uh, Twain's nineteen cats? I... Didn't he have two dogs or something? Isn't there's like a plaque? Uh, about his two dogs somewhere. There were 19 cats. However, only 12 had names. And they are the following. Apollinaris, Beetlejuice, Blatherskite, Buffalo Bill, Satan, Sin, Sour Mash, Tammany, Zoroaster. Is that how you... That sounds like a disease, doesn't it? Oh no! I'm reading about cats and the cat guy comes in. Oh my god! Delete him! Dude, what's up? Right, you just sitting outside your house? Nice. Um, I'm outside of my um, my uh, parents' house. Uh, we think of the kitties while they're gone. Oh, nice. What up? We were talking about cats. Welcome. Oh, cool. Beetlejuice cool. and Satan and Zoroaster. And Oh, good name for kitties. Yeah. I was saying earlier that, that Chris has a, uh, like a degree in something that has to do with philosophy people, and he's going to yell at us for how we pronounce things. <laughs> oh, shit. He apparently well, hates it when I call Socrates Socrates. Don't do it. But Socrates is fine with me calling him Socrates. You, you find our I one weakness. Socrates. The only thing we don't know is how to pronounce things. We know everything else, and Chris goes in and exploits the weakness like Achilles' heel. Just <laughs> bam. You want to know how smart I am, George? It's Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get so, the Bill and Ted's reference. <laughs> I know what you're doing. I put on my soaks before I put on my shoes. Yes, that is also I do that as well. Yeah. 
No, I was telling I was telling Brett like I know I can't pronounce any of these Greek names, so why not just mispronounce them on purpose? <laughs> that saves me the trouble. We got Thucydides, we got Z- <laughs> Z- 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 Xenophon or whatever. Oh, we got Xenophon, right? Is that correct? Should I got to change yeah, that now? I'm so used to Wait, <laughs> it's Xenophon. not Xenophon. <laughs> Xenophon. Yeah, because it's like Xenophon, Xenophobia. Damn it! Then okay, I blame. Xenophobia. I blame my third grade teacher for that one then because she pronounced it. Could be regional. Xenophon. It could be regional. And, you know, as a third grader, you're so susceptible to Greek. um, Wait, Xenophon. You're learning that Greek, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course I wasn't. It was fourth grade. So um, I'm down. uh, So, hey, Bradley, you missed some cool stuff, dude. Yeah. Yeah, we found a cask. Were you, and we found a cask. It was in Albuquerque. Um, Robert Fox is going to pick it up. Yeah. Oh, uh, funny got it. Just don't take the wrong turn. Josh Cornell is there. Uh, Josh Gates came on and announced his new show, Destination Known. It was fun. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, and then what else happened? Uh, oh, you missed our new theme song for today. Sing it again, Brett. No, I can't remember. I can't remember it. It was so good. I mean, you guys have to. It was. It was for an original song that nobody's ever heard before. Like that's pretty amazing, right? For for me to like come up with the rhyme scheme, the chord progression, the harmonies, um, the the beats, tons of beats, pretty awesome. Somebody with uh, a British accent needs to cover Sunday Bloody Sunday and just make it Sunday Bloody Fun Day. That would be good. <laughs> That's a good one. There you go. There uh, you go. Okay. All right. Do I it like as, that. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. No. I got I yelled at Yo- for that, too. Apparently, Johan wasn't British. Johan wasn't English. He was an English teacher. And that got Johan's, Johan's from Detroit. <laughs> the fuck you talking about? <sighs> George got corrected on that one. A lot. Who knows, yeah. who knows where these people are? It's the internet. Uh, Chris apparently knows where all of these people are. <laughs> okay. It, besides what Chris. What they all do for a living. Damn it. Well, that's Chris, Chris has... doesn't wear sleeves. Sleeves make us dumber. Yeah. Yes. You don't wear sleeves in the summer. I got it. Oh. Well, it's not really summer out here. It's like 62 degrees. Oh, yeah. You're in, in the fog area, season. So. Yes. Like, so it's, core fog it's season. gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, you guys are lucky I'm not wearing a parka today. <laughs> but, um, okay, so what up, Bradley? Uh, you came in for a reason. What What did you want to announce? I heard you have a big announcement. Yep, I do. I pooped today. And it was awesome. <laughs> yes! 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 It's, it's been like three days, months. And it finally happened. And it was great. Oh. So awesome, dude. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Have you, um, did you get an award? Thank you guys giving me the public forum to announce it. You uh, you got it. Um, uh, This is the best Sunday fun day ever. This is, uh, that's not what I expected to hear um, about (laughs) the announcement. Sorry, I didn't know I had an announcement. Uh, You You don't. make one up. Yeah, you're supposed to make one up that was better than pooping. (laughs) <laughs> it needs to be better than pooping, dude. All right, let's try it again. Hey, Bradley's got an awesome announcement. What is it? In case anybody's wondering, this is what podcast recordings are like when we're off air. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of editing. This is exactly <laughs> what we do. The enti- It's like six hours of this bullshit. And then George somehow spends two weeks editing the whole thing down. <laughs> Making it sound like we know what we're talking about. I was watching um, um, Umbrella Corporation or whatever it's called. Umbrella Academy. That's what it is. Um, Johnny, Johnny Windex uh, wants to know if you've logged out. <laughs> Get it? Poop logs, had Bradley. Poop, poop. Ba- backlog. Poop. And then you log. Hello. Um, isn't Adam British? Poop a lot. Um, 
somebody wants to find a cask at Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> <laughs> Troy oh, says, people are watching this. Troy says, hey. Sunday fun day, la, la, yeah. la, la. I was going to um, make fun of other stolen artifacts at Hobby Lobby, but I should probably stay away from that. <laughs> yeah, don't. Don't go there. <laughs> um, so, Chris, uh, like, it, it, are you, what, which ones are you working on? San Francisco, what else? Um, Chris is like, have you seen my chart? All of them. I don't <laughs> look at fucking charts. What I was going to say, about? like. I'm the hired humorist here, guys. I don't hey, fucking check I, charts. I got, I got an actual question. So we were talking about New Orleans yesterday, Chris. Um, not you and I, but we were doing a recording for a New Orleans actual podcast episode. And your chart came up. And we were talking, like, I'm not going to sort of give away what we were talking about because you can find out in the episode. But the question of a, a lot of the stuff in that chart is really, really nailed down. Like the Montreal stuff is, is good and it's, it's hard to deny. But the New Orleans one is kind of like, eh. it's, it's like the theme is Mardi Gras, you know, and Mardi Gras is known for it, it through, throughout New Orleans. So my point my my sort of when when that was brought up i kind of said that um it might be because we just don't know enough about the new orleans puzzle we don't know enough because it seems like a lot of that was a lot of that chart was sort of working backwards you know a lot of it was new information but it was also working backwards a little bit from what is known so we i was curious if the new orleans part was vague because it's we just don't know that much about it or do you not think the New Orleans part was vague and I'm just looking at it wrong? I disagreed with them on New Orleans. Um, so I don't, I don't know that it, it was necessarily vague or not. And I'm not gonna, I don't want to put someone well, else's work on trial myself, but so here, here's, I, here's... I personally differ on and we we differ i differ with them on san francisco too so it's like you know we're all right we're Fair enough. we're so well, you're you're not the person to ask that question I yeah i, I can ask someone Be, because it seemed like like the mary gold with gold a golden square mile and blah for new orleans it was or for uh, montreal it was very like it was concise and it made a whole lot mm -hmm. of sense and then when it got to new orleans it was like the theme is Mardi Gras, and that means Gallier Hall, which I, I, I follow it. I understand it. It just didn't right. seem as buttoned up as the rest of them did. So anyway, we talked about it. You guys got a plug on the next episode. <laughs> nice. But yeah, like two, well, here I am three weeks in a row now. But two weeks ago, I told you my, um, my thoughts on New Orleans and what I think the theme is. She did probably, and like I said before, with the memory, <laughs> can you can you <laughs> with the memory thing? Can you There's reshare those thoughts, please? Yes, can you reshare those thoughts, please? <laughs> but summarize, summarize. Um, well, I'm I'm with a lot of the folks that follow this the stories right in the storyland uh -huh. stuff. So I think I think there's definitely a theme to that image of children's stories. But and but I'm sorry the 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 checkered background with the the little like horse down there like that that gives me a bit of a a chess uh vibe and uh the narcissus flower gets me to uh narcissus the, the greek story of the the guy who um fell in love with his own representation in a mirror so chess and mirrors tell me um alice through the looking glass was, yeah that was so. a big 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 thing in that podcast so um look forward to that one it was alice in wonderland I'm or well looking glass here. specifically looking glass specifically well, or alice in wonderland? The, the looking glass alice through the looking glass is an allegory for chess it's well, it's like an allegory for itself. religion, but it like it. Oh, okay, so you use chess. <laughs> it used chess, right? So that's you know. I think somebody just of... tried to come into the room and then cut out. So if you guys want to come in, you can come back. I'll just repost the link. So on that topic, so we we touched on it briefly in the podcast, and you'll hear about it. But in the bottom right corner of the image, there's um that very purposefully distorted uh, chess area with the uh, little with the little kind of dragon head or 
whatever you want to call it, the Knights piece, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, that's kind of in the shape of Louisiana. Uh, would you say on that line of thinking that that could possibly be from House of Looking Glass, and that's the um, – uh, what's that monster called? The uh, the Jabberwocky? The Jabberwocky, yeah. yeah. Could that I don't know. Be what that's indicating? I don't know. I hadn't thought about that, but – it's an interesting that was, idea. That was a fun conversation yesterday. Yeah, it sounds like it was. That's cool. I'm glad you're doing that. Wow. I just, um, I, I only dabble in New Orleans and I haven't gone too deep into it, but I tend to to dip my fingers into like a little bit of all of them, but I've only really gone deep in San Francisco, Montreal, and New York. See, my thing with New Orleans is I stayed at Gallier Hall for so long, I didn't really research anything else. And now finding out about Storyland basically through other people is almost mind-blowing to me. There's a lot of interesting stuff out there. To be fair, fair, the reason that you were stuck at Gallier Hall is because we got super drunk there when we were were there. (laughs) And uh, remember, we couldn't make it all the way over to um, Storyland. It was way too much to to handle. We were like tripping. Yes. Opium. Not that kind of... Tr- okay, whatever. No, we weren't. Um, but uh, I say new rule. Um, new rule. Uh, if, you come, if you come in here now, you have to sing the Sunday Fun Day theme song. Okay. Or, or, you, have to, or you have to go... Su- you have to go su- Sunday Bloody Fun Day. <laughs> you have to sing that in a, British, in a British accent if you join. Yes. And that will be our new theme song. Yes. Now we wait. actually. Um, so, uh, so you guys did this podcast yesterday. Yeah. Was it fun? It was. It was a lot of people. Oh my god! It's yeah. going to be a nightmare to edit. It was, it, but uh, informative. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You guys ready had, to dig? Um, Who's ready to dig, Bradley? Oh, dude, um, I've got a spot not in New Orleans that I'm totally ready to dig. I'm just trying to get that permish. Um, yeah. But in New Whoa. Orleans, um, we've got some some good ideas of areas. I'm ready to go down there and just walk around with people. So I'm not working right now. If somebody wants to meet in New Orleans in a weekend, I will drive down there and we'll have some fun. God. I'll drive down, but I'm just going to drink grenades. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> that's all I do. I'll be like, you guys go look for the cask. Yeah. I'm going to sit <laughs> in just... This- this bar that goes around in a circle. You eat a clam pizza in the hotel. No, a shrimp. <laughs> was it clam or shrimp it was, pizza that it we was had? Crawfish you just, and shrimp, and it was good. Oh, dude, that was so great. And I, I've, I've had some great pizzas before, but that, uh, what a curveball the, the seafood on there was. But, um, yeah, you just sit in your hotel room uh, or go to a bar. You drink, and then other people go do stuff, and then they report back to you about how um, the, their search went. That's, those are my, if you ever want to do a meetup with me, that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to sit in a bar while you guys do shit and uh, I'm going to drink. Yeah. So we promoted Brett to manager of the meetups. Yeah. Yes. That's what it sounds like. I, uh, good luck to all of you They're trying to have me uh, plan something. I'm, uh, I'm terrible at it. Um, but so what uh, I really cool. liked about the uh, podcast yesterday was uh, we had so many crazy, intelligent, and uh, very well versed individuals that um, I maybe said one or two things. George said very little. Um, a lot of it is from the community members and the information that they had to offer, and it was it was awesome. It was great yeah. to hear everything they had to share. Those are the best. Yeah, those are the best, as you can tell. Yeah, we we'll just sit back and go, you make the <laughs> content for us. <laughs> Since all we do is just fuck around the whole time. Um, yeah. uh, which is why it takes uh, George uh, three weeks to edit. Um, so what else? What? Uh, so, oh, I got a question for you guys. Which one is going to be found next? And part two, within what time period? Let's start with Chris. Oh, that's a good question. Um, Someone holding a gun to your head saying, like, you have to answer this. I mean, I, I'd have to say San Francisco because I'm very confident in myself. 
probably right. Sounds like I need to read this email that you sent that I missed. <laughs> um, and then what with within what time period? Um, that's a that's another good question. Uh, whether whether we what whether one can actually be retrieved still is always going to be in question. Um, versus whether we actually can deductively solve where it was. But a year. I'll get, I'll just say a year. Dude, bad. you're saying San Francisco's going to be solved in a year, like uh, or a cask will be dug up. Or I mean, if, if you're putting a gun to my head, I'm going to tell you whatever I need to to get you to put the gun away. It's the one take in Alaska. Gun, Just go to Alaska. Leave take me the gun out of the equation, then. Okay. <laughs> uh, to take away your guitars and put on sleeves. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> if you're wrong, you have to wear sleeveless shirt or sleeve shirts for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah. Collars. Yeah. Yes. Like hum humid summers with sleeves is my nightmare. Who bought tickets to the gun show? Chris did. <laughs> um, okay, Bradley. What do you got? Ooh, um. If I can get permission, um, I would say Roanoke. Okay. Uh, got some strong evidence there. Um, if I can't get permission, I'm really excited with everything that people shared with um, with the podcast. So I would say New Orleans, and I'd say six months. Wow. So yeah, we got to listen stuff. to this. We got to listen to this podcast. Is yeah, what you're it's some really really good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds good. Okay, George, what do you got? Uh, I don't know, New Orleans, uh, 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 Roanoke or San Francisco. Like I, I know, I yeah, Roanoke or San Francisco. I'd go there. So, so there's some progress made on both of those. That uh, yeah. sounds like we're not not everybody's privy to. So it must be serious beeswax. If people aren't sharing openly, hint hint. Uh, but mine. okay. Okay. Well, I hear some. I hear some talk about San Francisco and some people having a spot, and they seem very confident. Um, I'm not in on the loop, so I don't know what it is. But there's some very confident talk about San Francisco, so I would put that in my number three. Um. Okay. That's cool. That sounds good. Um, I just made that up to um to keep the conversation moving. What do you guys got? Well, you got to answer it, Brett. Yeah. Um. I think Milwaukee. Really? Ooh. Interesting. And I think I think Milwaukee for a couple of reasons. I it seems to me like the like the the verse is um, more specific. Does that make sense to you guys? Like yeah. I, I like when I read through that, I feel like okay, if you caught on to one thing. You could go you, the hundred steps into this and the that. I feel like it's it's a set of instructions. You know what I mean? More than it, more than it's kind of this right. vague wordplay type stuff. It, I feel it's like a lot like Cleveland, where it just kind of tells you directly. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. I feel like Milwaukee is more like Cleveland and Chicago than it is like San Francisco or New York or Boston, where there's a lot or, of play on words. Or yeah, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I, it, that's, I feel like somebody's going to hit onto something and go, okay, now here it is, just a set of instructions, um, a path to follow. Uh, and my time frame is uh, within the next, <coughs> like, within the next, like, 20 years, for 20 sure. 20 to 40? Like, 20 to, 20 to 40 ish. Yeah. Yes. So, what's um, interesting to me about Milwaukee is, um, Everybody that I've talked to that's climbed those stairs, everybody has a different count for the amount of stairs they climbed. Oh, yeah, nobody, but uh, nobody yeah. finds it to be the same number. Why is? Well, how could that be? Number one, know. it's a lot, and number two, from what oh. I understand, they added like a landing <laughs> a or something to it. Yeah, it's hard to count, man. Especially when you're in Milwaukee, you're so depressed that you're just drunk. Like <laughs> you have to be. Um, but from what I understand, they added like a landing and that either added or took away some steps or something. I'm not real sure. I'm, I, I don't know. What kills me about Milwaukee is that verse tells you to look for a letter from a country of Wonderstone's heart, which you would take to be a letter from like Germany. And there is a monument right. with an entire letter written on it from Germany. Right. And nobody, ca nobody cares. 
Nobody, everybody's ignoring it. That's got to be a waypoint, right? I don't know. I don't know. That has to play into it. I mean, I it's mean, an entire right letter, <laughs> like from Germany. Oh, well, whatever. This, so the <sighs> entire country of Germany wrote a yeah. letter to the U.S., yeah. to Milwaukee, and what did they Hans, say? Hans got together and he went to everybody's house Hans and they got all everybody. contributed a letter. It, ma it makes sense. It makes a lot and it of was sense. Like, just kind of it was like, the paper. each person wrote a different word. It's kind of like when you make up a story. Damn. Mm -hmm. and it, I mean, it, it's oddly undeniable. Enough, oddly enough, it turned out to be the lyrics to Duhast by Ramstein. <laughs> wow. Um, how, it's undeniable. It's yeah. undeniable, guys. It's impossible right. to ignore that. I'm going to go home. I'll catch up with you guys here in a little bit. I'll log on in, in the office. Oh. Okay. Wait, can you, do you know if you can get back in to this link? This link expires, bro. We'll Self-destructs. Yeah. If it Maybe doesn't work, doesn't, it's okay. It, if he doesn't want to, that's fine. I mean, yeah, Bradley doesn't like just, us. He could have just told us that though. You know, like, yeah. hey, I'll log in later when I know the link is expired. What a dick. <laughs> hey guys, I'm going to wash my hair. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. I'm going to poop. <laughs> See you in six hours, guys. Um, you know what we should do is we should have somebody put a put a poll up in the uh, in the Facebook group um, to get thoughts on Chris's um, uh, revelation today. What do you think? Should sure. we have somebody put a poll up and see what people think? Live polling, yeah. and then what should the the question should be? Like does should is, Chris wear sleeves? Oh yes, should no. Chris wear sleeves? Yes or no? <laughs> you guys this are like a far, a far too metal for this shit. <laughs> Who wants to put that up? Uh, no. So what should that like? I don't know. Like, I feel like Chinatown's getting a lot more attention now than it than it has before for good reasons, and that's exciting to me. Because like this is the Chinese puzzle. Why? Why have we been stuck in Golden Gate Park for so damn long? Because he put Doesn't the park sense. in the freaking painting. Like, yeah, but it's, still. that's hard. I mean, it, it takes. It's 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 one of those things. It's hard to deny. It takes a it took a long time <laughs> to sort of get away from. Yeah, but he put the terminal tower in Chicago or in Cleveland, and he put True. Uh, the water tower in in Chicago, and cows weren't buried anywhere near those. You know what I'm saying? It no, put City Hall in Milwaukee, and arguably it's not buried near there. Uh, the fort in San Francisco. He put a lot of buildings in these. and so um, It's true, but when you're looking for a park, and he and, gives yes. you a park, it seems like, oh, well, that's this is the easiest one. It's a no-brainer. That's the park. It just happens yeah. to be, like, I don't know, 10 miles long, or I don't know what a mile is, but, you know, it's a huge park. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> Somebody That's somebody right. posted the Go Fear something monument in Milwaukee and asked if I was talking about that one, and I'm not. There is a there is a uh, a monument in the middle of a road with like a dude with a horse on it or something. Um, I'd have to find it, but it's big, and it's it's legit on the side of it. Got a bronze plaque that's a whole letter from Germany. Uh, Debbie says uh, it's a Richard Haas mural. What? It's not a, it's a statue. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, but somebody said, while we're finding that, somebody said something funny. So Lisa Trigg, I think you pronounce it Trigg, said, no sleeves are for sissies. Oh. Now, there is no comma in there. So it doesn't say, it doesn't <laughs> say no sleeve. comma. <laughs> sleeves are for sissies. It says no no sleeves are no sleeves are for sissies. It's a riddle. So, dude, I think you're getting called a sissy right now. I think, unless I'm Lisa okay wants to, um, which is fine. <laughs> There's no problem with that, right? No, I'm okay. Um, and then, uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and then uh, Debbie sent something to you, George. Uh, Rachel's saying. Rachel's on here. Oh God. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no, it's the it's uh, Rachel Malley. Oh. oh. Okay. Yes. The good one. <laughs> Never mind. I mean the the word. <laughs> I'm. Ah. 
Uh, just kidding. Um, so did somebody put this poll up? So I think the monument that I'm talking about in Milwaukee is the Steuben Monument. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm looking for like the letter and I can't find it. Steuben? But I'm pretty sure it's the Steuben Monument. You're Steuben. Mm. <laughs> you guys are Steuben. Um, I'm still looking at the cafe house over here. I'm finding a That's cask while you guys are totally screwing around. Okay, so got somebody's else, got it. <laughs> yeah. We'll fill the, we'll fill the, fill the, yeah, fill, fill the dead air. Um, we talk about farmer's almanacs for a minute. All right, I'm on. That was like <laughs> one of the, one of the inspiration, like they had all these dumb riddles in it. You know what else it always had? Birth flowers, birth months, birth gems, like all that stuff is in a farmer's almanac along with all these stupid riddles and brain teasers teasers they were horrible it was like what flower is on the face two lips oh god you're like, oh. dad like jokes that. well they're riddles i only brain teasers. I, I just remember that my grandmother always used to have farmer's almanacs in south my like where she lived in south carolina i have some weirdos uh hang on uh-oh off the record we're in trouble i have to go for a bit oh no just for a second but i can be back you guys just continue to talk and i'll just cover up my, my thing okay i'll do this yeah i'll be right back I feel like george is busted right now well, we'll get the juicy details when it comes back. Okay, so what were you saying? Oh, wait, so uh, you're you're in this air union. You said union is a big theme for you. No, I think it's I think it's a little bit different. Okay. I don't want to get into it right now. Okay. Not yet. I'm not ready okay. for that. Yet. But previously you up. said previously you said union, or uh, maybe it was the a couple of you guys, maybe you and Phil and. Um, John, I, I like reluctantly came around to it because there was a lot of evidence sort of pointing to a unity theme from the painting, but right. that, that's another one of like, at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're all different people and we all bring our, our different opinions and thoughts to the table and we don't always agree. And yeah, San Francisco is one that I don't agree with. Yeah. Um, it's a, I, I think it's a hard one. I, I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I went back, uh, back and listened to the, the podcast we did, uh, about the fake, the oh, fake, yeah. uh, the fake find man, that guy, that guy really pulled one over <laughs> on us. You know, the whole story, you listen to all that, you knew you were all aware of like, yeah, that Dr. Gabe yeah. just. Yeah. worked us it was fantastic and so sad and kind of awesome though that it didn't get found by some french dude that walked in and um unearthed it yeah i mean yeah. huntington park's not a bad not a bad call but um or huntington falls yeah Hunting, oh yeah huntington falls, huntington falls. but yeah, but something. didn't didn't he say he found it at the verity statue which is not in no i think he um he booked his dig for the very statue and oh. then at the last minute was like oh no actually i want to dig over here and that's where he found it dude how did we how did this happen to us he's just lucky i wasn't living in san francisco at the time oh man we would have been on that <laughs> in, a, in a second um yeah so i was i, I was listening to that um but I just think, um, I, man, I, I, San Francisco, I've got, so like, do you have it whittled down to one spot where you're like, I've eliminated or, or like I, area, sorry. Like, yeah, I'm like, I've eliminated Legion of Honor. I've eliminated Aquatic Park. I've eliminated Golden Gate Park, I, I've, you know, or not. Um, I mean, in, in my, in my own opinion, I've eliminated those things. I don't. I don't think that 
that means they're necessarily out of the running. But yeah. the, the evidence that I'm following, like the trail that is taking me to where where I'm going is um, feels feels very strong. Feels good. And you haven't seen anything like this Q4T or anything like that? I don't know. I don't think so. Nothing that I've found. Well, cool. I guess my, the difference, my, mine is always the why I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a why people have been in every yep. park in San Francisco. I don't think there's any, any park that has not been investigated by someone at some time in the last, even in the last like, three or four years. Right. I don't even know True. what city we're talking about anymore. <laughs> uh, still talking about San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen searchers all over the map on that thing. Yeah. All of them. I would, I was just saying, like, um, there there are basically like four or five main areas where where generally people are. I know some people say, you know, Alcatraz and Treasure Island and stuff like that, but um, or Angel Island. But like, mm -hmm. it's aquatic park. You hear a lot. Golden Gate Park, Legion but only of like Honor. Only like one half of Golden Gate Park. Yeah, and Legion of which, Honor. Which half? The half with the the music concourse and all of that. People don't tend to go past the the yeah. crossover drive. They Into go, yeah, the other side. I forget the name. I like I, crossover. Like, so <laughs> crossover's down. That's uh, so Stow Lake is just east of crossover. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's east uh, is Stow, where a lot of people are. Huntington Falls. Uh, and then a little bit further east is, yeah, but they don't usually go up into the panhandle. Yeah. Right? But some yeah. people are down to like polo grounds, windmill. That's all, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. That's all west of, of, um, oh, okay. crossover. So I was just, because I was thinking like, you got the bison paddock, you got the, the polo yeah. field, like Lindley Meadow and stuff. You, right. know, you just don't see people really down there much. Yeah, like once not, you get to, you're right. Once you get to Stowe Lake, it's like, and then you have little scragglers who are like, right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, anyway, exactly. Sorry for breaking exactly. Out of the conversation. No, that's okay. And I'm pausing too. I will be back in two seconds. Got to take care of something. Brett, Hold on. Brett's got to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I keep coughing. Oh my God. Stop coughing, dude. It's, <laughs> it's like I'm really off die. pudding. It's I know. Pudding. I'm sorry. So you go smoke now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Chris, talk to me about music. What kind of music do you play? Is it like just um, hardcore metal? I've talked about death metal with a bunch of people in the pod. I feel like it should be a death metal podcast. So please tell me well, you I mean, play you like a that. mayhem cover band. No, if there's, I mean, my music of choice usually is like doom or black metal. Um, but the the band I was in, this it's like a different life. I guess like ten ten years ago, um, it was. The Backstreet Boys? <laughs> no. Um, it, it was like mixing elements of like thrash and doom and um, just real heavy stuff like neurosis and like a lot of a lot of the, the sort of heavier bands. Toured around Europe a lot. Toured around oh, did you? Canada, yeah. Is this a band I would know? I don't think so. I'll send it to you, but all right. Um, like we had like three fans, and they were named Jerry, and <laughs> uh, we we released a bunch of records and um, almost signed to some interesting labels, and then life moved on. Music is it's hard to like make a, a living from music. Especially that kind of music. Yeah, it's it's a bit a bit more challenging. So, like I like the biggest name that if if you talk about like death metal, the biggest name everybody knows is Mayhem. And I went and saw Mayhem in Jacksonville, and there were twenty three people. <laughs> I, bet I was my, like, I was I was like, this is going to be a packed show. There were like twenty three people there. <laughs> I, I bet like like Behemoth and some of those some of those like um, Behemoth sells out down here. Yeah, right. Like those festival death metal yeah. bands are are gonna pull larger crowds. But Behemoth is weird. They, they tour. 
Yeah, do they? I, they just had that live album. I didn't know they had a new one. Yeah, they just really picked up the single. live album on vinyl. But yeah, they tour love, with like weird bands vinyl. down here. Like they toured with Slipknot. Why is Behemoth touring with Slipknot? And then they toured with Anthrax, which was weird. Like, I, don't, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. It's like, let's worship the devil. And then, like, <laughs> Slipknot's like, all oh, the teenagers, let's go. <laughs> anyway. All right. I don't know what else to talk about. Rachel just had, like, a major meltdown. We were trying to give away a lawnmower and a old mailbox on Facebook. And then these people, like, Uh-oh. figured out where we live. And they're like, we're coming right now to get it. Like, dude. Oh, God. Easy. Anyway. <laughs> I really have nothing else to talk about. I don't know if you guys did. I just I had fun you. today. <laughs> it was a Sunday. It was it was a fun Sunday. <laughs> it's just I weird. Know. Like I know I knew Brett wanted to talk about San Francisco, but then I was like, "There's so much stuff that we just can't talk about." You know, like how are we going to make it? How are we going to make a whole Sunday about San Francisco? It was a Sunday. It was. It was now I can hear myself. Yeah. Brett's back. Yeah. How are we going to spend an entire Sunday speaking <laughs> of San Francisco? Blasphemy. Well, there's just so much stuff we can't talk about. Blasphemy. That's oh, true. we're just going to talk about New Orleans and Roanoke like a ton. And you guys ignore San Francisco. That's true. Everybody do. does. Yeah. Because it's I awesome. I feel like a and lot of people, a lot of people pay attention to San Francisco. I, I just had to come in with a with a bang. I, 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 you know, I have nothing else to talk about. Um, okay, did we put a poll up though? By the way, about no, Christmas, no. Did it, nobody did it for us. What do we want to? Is Chris, so? Do we just want to put. What do we want to put on here? Is Chris interesting? Uh, <laughs> well, you go. Can okay, take this. That's not exactly what I was uh, thinking, but um, I was thinking something along the lines of, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, something about his, uh, the, the trademark. Oh. Do you think the trademark is the uh, object of Twain's attention? Yes or no? Trademark. I'm gonna put it to the test, Chris. Building. Objects, I can't. What is the puzzle? What's the puzzle that gets right, the least now, attention? I'm gonna link uh, the. I'm gonna link the blog post in this. Okay. Thank you. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's one that. Get, I mean, <laughs> even the ones that have been solved get a lot of attention. I see posts about really Boston do. every day. <laughs> they so, really do. I, I know. know. Well, that's because we're not quite sure exactly what went down there. Yeah. I mean, I no, I I believe the final location, and I of course believe they found it. If, I'm not doubting that or anything like that. But I just I'm not quite sure of the solution. I wanted I wanted a nice, easy solve, you know what I mean, so that yeah. we could use it for groundwork for the foundation of other stuff. But I did I didn't get it. But so when when JJP talks about how they were kind of coming up with some of the stuff on the fly. He was still painting while Byron was out there burying treasures. Like, do you think they really reused anything? Or is each one just going to be completely unique? When you say anything, do you mean, what do you mean exactly? Any, any elements like are there repeatable patterns that you can take that you could take from boston and apply to insert other verse um in the same way so byron wasn't known as some master puzzle maker right like no, so. he was fami- right he was familiar with um uh, with techniques and and uh, what is it masquerade, right? I, I was uh, maybe a little bit um, peripherally like the story. Maybe peripherally, the, story, but the, the solution wasn't wasn't known at the time that the secret came out. So check this out. So I've been I've been doing uh, 
I took some time off, but I've been doing puzzles since I was like a little kid of, of various types, right? Um, you know, start with Highlights Magazine, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, just little easy things like that when I was a little kid. and like, But I still, if I were forced to write a some sort of like book that involved puzzles, I would struggle to move beyond the uh, couple of techniques and things that I've learned, right? Or, or like, you know, I only know like how to do certain things. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so like for, yeah. for a novice puzzle guy like Byron to really apply all of these different wild techniques and mechanisms and methods and then and then somehow pull them together with the verse and the thing it sounds a little bit beyond somebody's scope well it, it seems like he it seems like most of the verse he has the the same sort of method he just it's like if he were to take a whole bunch of like he's just in essence he's just trying to come up with creative ways to say certain things right he's rewording rewording clues in creative ways right. at least in the verses in the paintings is completely different but you know right right most of those were That's john's he yeah they weren't doing it alone they were riffing off each other they yeah. were pushing each other's boundaries in different ways or at least that's how jjp makes it sound um you know he'd be like oh i'd, I'd say this and Byron would say go with that and you know they, they you you hear that they were collaborating so uh, other and people it, so it's collaborating with people that other people that don't know how to make puzzles well i mean it's, is that what you're telling done, me when you've done 12 in a row or you're doing 12 in a row when you've done five you know everything you that figured you've done. It out Man, yeah we're in big and it's like guys. okay if you know, if we do this again they're gonna know so let's do something yeah. different instead right you know what people don't talk about enough um and probably for a good reason um is that J J byron and john had this this relationship right where they riffed off each other but when you listen to people like ben talk or joe ellen talk he, he talks about how all of them would get together at a restaurant and just bullshit. nobody ever talks about the input that these other people had in this puzzle which if he worked this closely with with palancar he probably worked that closely with other people it's possible i mean jo i don't know i mean palancar was living with him or staying with him or or something you know at no, some, they were, some points they, they were he would stay in new york he and, would stay in new york you know and they he'd stay together with them and like i don't know I don't know. Sure. But I thought for a while Perard was like Byron's roommate. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. You get him on the I don't know. I don't know. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. It's weird. Like all the other people that work on the book, there's one that we don't want on the podcast. And I'm not gonna say who that is, but we just absolutely don't want him on there. And then like, but Perard's really hard. He's just like, nah. Who's the one we don't want on the podcast? Oh, you want like now I have to talk nice about. Dude. I don't want to. He's he's not the you person we're talking just, about, but he is a really the really nice dude. You can't just say things and then like not yeah, say them. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Say. This one. Right okay, here. so you're like Chris's sleeves. I'm kind of yes. here, but I'm also not quite I'm not there. And I'm welcome so to the gun show, bitches. Yeah. Do I need to go put on a sweater? Yes. Chris is like, I don't have any shirts with sleeves. You I have are, a sweater. You, we are making us, you are making us very nervous right now. You go get one of, of my us. wife's cardigans. Yeah. Yes, yeah, go get a cardigan. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have nothing around. Chris is just like, just black shirts, no sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. Just wear metal shirts and just have a good time. Let's, let's live my life. I don't need your judgment. I wish that was that cool. Sleeves. I got a battle jacket. Do you have a battle jacket? Are you cool enough for a battle jacket? <laughs> what is that? I don't have one right now, but I did when my, I was younger. My my battle jacket is an old fireman's coat. Oh. What's a battle jacket? Right, the, like, you know, like those black jean jacket with the 
that it's people like wear to like metal show. Hang on, I'll go get it. I'll show you. It's all like the yeah, patches we, on it and your favorite yeah, bands. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Is it denim usually? Yeah, mm -hmm. it has to be denim. Yes, it's denim. It's cut you have to like put your studs in there. Like the eighties were a sweet time. We were we were too poor. We couldn't afford denim nor patches. I imagine Brett with the punk jacket with the, the leather black with the spikes. No, Brett had the, uh, the red and black uh, plaid. Michael Jackson? <laughs> oh, Chess <laughs> King. Are you talking about Chess King? No, the, 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 the ones in the mall. Battle jackets. Yeah, there you go. It says you kill your local that. heroin dealer. Oh, oh my like God. We got bad does, that say does that say motherhood? Yeah. It says brotherhood because it's oh. a fire jacket. I it's a fire jacket. Uh, yeah, there's Bad Religion, Amon Amarth, uh, can Cannibal Corpse, a couple other guys. Right. It's a good spread. Yeah. Well, it's mostly like my thing is I'll only get patches from shows I've been to. Like I won't buy them on the oh, internet okay. and I won't like make them. So. Oh, you'll buy yeah. them when they're expensive. Okay. Yeah. But I like to support <laughs> the band. No, you got to support the bands. Yeah. And then, like, I bought this. This is totally not a Watane patch, but I thought it was. And I bought it at a Watane show. It turns out it's some band that opened for them. Like, you got to be careful with that. They weren't at that show. They just happened to have their merch out. Like, they had skipped that, that date. Yeah. Yeah. Never but buy the, a black metal band patch that you don't know who they are. Cause yeah. Oh. The next thing you know. Totally not Watane. Forget it. I, I actually had to go on Reddit and find out what the name of the band was. And then somebody I, just told me. I did that with Celine Dion. I wore this like super kick-ass Celine Dion patch on my battle, my battle <laughs> coat. And like, I got so worked. They're like, you don't know Celine Dion. And I'm like, I totally do. And like, you know, it was a disaster. I always wanted to get like a Hanson patch, just like a bunch of death metal bands and Hanson. <laughs> Stick it in the middle, just hide it in the, hide it in the yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you confuse that patch because you can't read the font. Like, what did that say? <laughs> that, that, what does that even say on there? I Look at that. What the hell that, is well, that? That, that says a You can't even read that. Subhumans. Where, where did it go? That's right. It's big. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The hell is that? I think it says. Of course I, you've never seen them before. I don't know. No idea. You can't see that. <laughs> If you, that's how you're going to, oh, do you like, metal. Blibbidi blibbidi? yeah, it's, it is, it's a very, <laughs> nor, like, Norwegian font, or I don't know what, yeah. what, where do most of these guys come from? Yeah, the best bands have, uh, their logos look like trees painted by John Palancar. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. Um, and uh, did you guys notice that there are, we have another sleeveless hero oh bradley is de into death metal now i yeah. want him to be cool too but like 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 sort of eminem death metal i heard bradley likes ozzy oh yeah, yeah. i love I'm a ozzy. big ozzy head i've got um, bradley put ozzy on my display is ozzy stuff bradley put ozzy on his senior yearbook cover yeah, Ozzy's on my uh, high school senior yearbook cover. It's actually a fun story. I'll tell it really quickly since George yes. brought it up. Nobody's tell really it. interested in the secret, but I'll tell it. Um, so senior year in high school, they're doing the cover for the yearbook, and they decided uh, it's going to be like influential people in places um, over the last 100 years or whatever. So I'm like, dude, we've got we've to get Ozzy on there. And the yearbook teacher is like, well, if you, um, if you get permission to use a photo from their website, then yeah. So I – you know, it was back in the day, so I just emailed webmaster at ozzy.com, and um, <laughs> I get a response, and this dude's like, yeah, um, I talked to Sharon. She said it's cool uh, under one condition. I was like, what's that? And he's like, she said that she has to get a copy of the yearbook. I was like, okay, I'll totally make that happen. So uh, yearbook comes out. Um, I stay in contact with them, and I go to OzFest, and Sharon meets me backstage, and I give her a copy of the yearbook. She gets me an autograph for Ozzy. It's uh, it a pretty awesome time. So they have a copy of my senior yearbook somewhere in their giant house. And, um, awesome. Yeah. I have no cool. Chris, you got a cool band story? I have lots of cool band stories. Like, like uh, meeting somebody in a cool way. Like he, he met Sharon Osbourne. Yeah, I met, like I 
I've been before before you were in a band. Yeah, I like. I've been backstage in Ozfest. My um, my wife's dad is like an old punk, so I've met like I've met Bad Religion. Like um, Jay from Bad Religion is a good friend of my wife. We we ran into Lars from Rancid at uh, in um, the Amoeba in San Francisco. Cool. So like he's he's known my wife since she was a child, because um, her dad used to just bring them all to the shows and stuff. So it's just been. I gotta hang out with your wife's life. dad. <laughs> so she's cool from dude. she's from the Bay Area. No, yeah. he was from he was from Vancouver. So when oh. all the bands like they would tour up from the Bay Area from L.A. Cool. into into then to cross into Vancouver and play with like DOA and whoever else um so you just got to know them all and then they all started getting really big and you know your your friends come and come to town to play and you just go and see them and hang out awesome um brett, you, you got a cool band story brett uh i have plenty um but i will i will will tell uh two uh so i've been i've been backstage uh twice uh, to Hall and Oates. <laughs> nice. I have been backstage. Oates is a dick. I'll just tell you that. Hall is awesome and he's very nice. Oates, Oates thinks he's too cool for school. Um, and then uh, I did go to Ozfest. Uh, I don't remember when this. I don't. When was Ozfest happening? They played at the Shoreline Amphitheater. Chris, when would this have been? Like, I mean, 10, it would have like, been 12, like 15 yeah, years ago or between around. 97 and okay. 2000. All right. Yeah, so I went, never missed an Ozfest. I, I went and uh, Godsmack played. Um, it no, was, so it was like 1999. It was when yeah. you okay, was yes, that sounds yeah. right. That sounds right. Yeah. Um, uh, and so he had this mechanism that was built like a UFO, okay? And I'm pretty sure he was still, like, do you remember the stories of, like, him drinking, not drinking? He's in rehab. He's not in rehab. I, I, don't, I don't know what was going on with him, but he's definitely. Most musicians? I mean, definitely still had a screw loose going on. So he, he has this mechanism. There's this UFO thing sitting on stage, right, for most of the concert. Um, but it, uh, it lifts on this pole. Right. So he's he's so he gets in it. <clears throat> he's sitting in this UFO that like lifts off the stage and goes up like 30 feet off the stage. And he is at the controls of this fire hose. So basically water shooting out over the so audience. So took a page from Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, no, I'm talking about Ozzy. Oh, this is Ozzy. Ozzy is doing this. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking about Godsmack. Uh, Godsmack, Godsmack was good, and actually they gotcha. were one of the yeah, yeah. No, this is absolutely a this is okay. So this is Aussie. Aussie. Yes. Okay, so this is Ozzy, but um, it's it's two thirds of the way through the concert. He totally forgot that he was doing it. I think I think he just kind of spaced out, and and it was awesome at first because he was spraying everybody, and it was like you know ninety five degrees up. Yeah, so hot. But he forgot. That he was doing it so he like stood up and he like goes eh, you know I'm up in san jose you know <clears throat> and the hose stays in this position <laughs> it drops and it's spraying the heat of a thousand suns in in the form of like a like water like a beam like this big <laughs> straight at this one guy oh, and, no. and, and it would like it we kind of wiggle back and forth a little bit as he moved around and like this whole the front basically the second row of the concert had to like bail for three songs because he forgot that he was shooting them uh with direct water and they had to come out there with mops and clean the whole thing up it was it was awesome it was awesome that's awesome so that's so my gonna be like halfway through he was standing on this ufo and the alzheimer's kicked in and he just got up and went share he forgot <laughs> yeah, he just started singing like crazy train or something and he totally spaced on what he was doing. <laughs> and the people down there were like stoked at first but then you could see them kind of like this is starting to suck a little bit you know what i mean <laughs> and they all had to scatter they're like oh great seats glad we spent 400 bucks for the ozfest hell yeah but ozfest is was... Never missed Splash, one. Splash Zone's a little bigger at us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, 
Uh, I've also spilled beer on the lead singer of Better Than Ezra. Okay. That's good. Do you guys remember Better so Than if, Ezra? If we're talking about um, bandmate encounters, what it's gonna get. Uh, one of my favorites uh, was um, uh, standing around in a circle uh, after an Ozfest, and I was drinking Jaeger with uh, Zach Wild. Mm. Um, and nice. uh, cool. Zach was talking so much shit about Black Sabbath. So much shit. It really surprised me. Really? About but, uh, Black Sabbath? Yeah. It's kind of hollowed territory right there. Yeah, yeah you would think yeah. so. Uh, yeah. You would think so, but uh, yeah, Brother. he was talking to shit. So he's Dio a big, out of this. big motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is he big? Zach, he is Zach, somebody yeah. I would not want to mess with. He is a. Oh. Well, he used he used to be like your size, and now he's like a big motherfucker. Well, yeah, you think it, that, and then the dude uh, who's the dude who's the lead singer for um, uh, Mother. Tell your Dan kids Rick. not to walk. Yeah, Dan. So the uh, tiny little walk, like Dan. He's so sweet. dude. He's, he's like gotten his fairy. ass kicked by God. No, no. He like well, he's muscular and he's kind of intimidating he's on stage. Small. I maybe. And so you think he can kick your ass? But I've seen video of him get his ass kicked by. You know, he yeah. thinks he's tough. So yeah. you never know. You never know. Maybe yeah, he's no, a lot I would, of good videos. I wouldn't fuck with, uh, with Zach. Yes. Yeah. There's some good you know Dan Fig ass kicking videos. You know who I wouldn't have wanted to meet in a fight was Peter Steele from typo negative oh yeah that dude looked like he could brawl and he was like seven foot tall <laughs> the undertaker is like he like lives in my my old town in palaka oh, really? yeah he uh he married a there was some wrestler that came like some female wrestler that came out of palaka high school she like went to high school when oh. rachel was in high school and he cool. married her and now they like have a house in palaka and you walk through home depot and you're like holy shit it's the undertaker and he's buying plywood <laughs> That's amazing. It's less intimidating to see people in their natural habitat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You you don't really like he doesn't like it if you mess with him unless he's a kid. Like, or unless you're a kid. Like if you're a kid, right. he's super cool, but otherwise just, it's just like leave leave the Undertaker alone, let him buy his nails or whatever. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the Undertaker getting Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, so okay, what, we got the poll up. What made me think about the um, Oh yeah, okay. I voted yes. <laughs> music and wrestling and i mean <laughs> i'm i'm your demographic keep keep speaking directly to me but the only thing i know about wrestling is i had an nes game when i was growing up and it was um i don't know hulk hogan was on the cover and um that's that all wrestlemania for nes yes wrestlemania <laughs> yes yeah, the, there's a there's a short like a loser guy that, that wore like flames on his unitard. That, that was, was Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah, <laughs> Bam Bam Bigelow. That was, he was not short at all. On the on the game, he was. <laughs> I I don't watch wrestling. I, I was like, I, there was I a thin dude wrestling. named Yoko Zuna. <laughs> oh, <great>. yeah. <laughs> Have you guys so, seen a beer can in Andre the Giant's hand? Oh my God, it's so tiny. It's like. <laughs> One time he drank like sixty-eight beers or yeah. something like that. The Molson Canadians in Montreal. Yes, you know the the lore around yeah. that. Oh, I have a question before I forget. Okay. Um, uh, is it is it a known fact that the front of the book was written before he um, went out to sites? It isn't a known fact. No. Not that I'm aware of. It could be the other way around. Yeah. So, like, I kind of like this cath cafe thing, right? Because he yeah. could have gone and found it, decided on a site there, and then well, built it into the front of the book. It works the same as the Fountain of right? Youth, the Fountain of Youth we had mentioned, you know? It's mm -hmm. weird. It's so it's oh, a right. weird word. Right. Even for um, e even for what even in the context of what it's talking about. It's a weird word to use. It, it's correct. It's the correct word to use, but it's a weird, like obscure word to use. Yeah, it's sort of like Arabic. It's another, uh, like he went, he went to the old time dictionary. Yeah. Okay. I Sorry, I didn't mean to digress from wrestling and. Um, no, you just went straight back to puzzles. Metal. Yep. Very it's good. Been working, it's been working in the background this whole time. That's <laughs> it has been sitting there somewhere. <laughs> Had to shake uh, it loose so, a little bit. It looks like there are people that want to join. 
people. One of them, I don't know if we want to join, but it's really up to you guys. There's John I, Barda who wants to join, and Simon Baldwin wants to join. Simon Baldwin I, is a British guy who's been – you want to just keep going like this? I, 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 I don't it's care. It's Sunday, fun day. Let's throw somebody in there. Yeah, All right, fun day. let's just bring them both in. We Wait, only got like it? a half hour, though. What is it, 4 a.m., though, for, um, for Simon? Know. We just brought in John and Simon. What up, guys? Talk up. What's your favorite wrestler? Welcome. Damn it! I don't it's care. Sunday, Monday. Let's throw somebody in there. Uh oh. All right, go. Oh, right that goes. Who's doing that? Oh my god. You got to close it. What is it? Close the other. I'm on. You got to close. John down. does not have headphones on. Close. I don't the, have close headphones on. Uh, it's got to be John. John, I got to move you. I'm sorry. I got to do it. Okay. Yeah, that was John. Yeah. Oh shit. Bye, John. Grab headphones, John. I guess. John got I'm, John gets I'm, John's been mad at a lot of people in the Okay. So Simon, Simon is um Simon realize, is my uh, Doctor Who slash Aussie buddy. But but no, no. Simon gets to sing uh Sunday Bloody Fun Day <laughs> in a British <laughs> accent. British, yes, yes. 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 Dude. Let's no. hear it. No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not an Irish fan. I'm not Irish. Can't do I just it. Know him. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. We'll let yes. you pass. Yes. Right. Okay. So I was messaging uh, George today about uh, it was an exercise that I said we should all do, like a little thing. Yeah. Maybe with like people texting on the comments. I don't have the texts appearing on my windows though at the moment. So nope. I, nobody does. Nobody does. Okay. Well. Oh, that's, a, that's not very good. Um, well, okay, the idea was that I've got the book here, okay, and basically it was an exploration of the back of the book, okay, because the back of the book is something I haven't mined as much, really, as the front and the other stuff, the, the part of the puzzles. And there's loads of it, yeah, there's, there's, there's huge amounts. So what I was thinking is that instead, like having a segment on a Sunday fun day, the way we take, like, a number of fair folk and we just, just go through it, and like as, as a sort of like a small digest of the fair folk and you know uh talk about that those those things and see if we can glean anything and discuss them in detail and just do a couple of them and maybe two or three so here's my two arguments that against yeah, okay. that the, or the two not really arguments but problems that you, yeah, okay. you would have with that um number one out of the five people in this chat I think maybe only two of us would consider most of the fair folk would, would consider most of the clues. I think you, you and Chris would be like, yeah, there might be something there. And I think Chris, it would be a little less than you. I think Chris would be more open to it. Like me and Bradley and Brett, we're, we're all not opposed to the back of the book, but not mm. super into it. And the other thing, the more like, I, I think the more hard coded thing was, um, the interviews that have been done about the back of the book have said that um, Byron wanted a, a fairy per state, right? Mm. Which would mean that there should only be 12 of them that are applicable in any way. Exactly. Right? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. So we, we would be going through the rest of them looking for clues that don't exist. If, 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 if the if a fairy would have anything to do with a city, there would only be 12. So the rest of them, we would be, we would be searching for things that probably just aren't there. And in, 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 in all of them, we'd kind of be doing that. Um, okay. Does that make so, sense? Yeah, so in my, opinion, oh, in, in my opinion, in my opinion for the back of the book, um, the strongest thing that we've gotten as a, there might be something there is going to be something with playing with the words with the beginning of the words in certain columns and putting multiple words together to make a different word some sort of word play um that i don't think anybody's really given a good um idea that's of how that one. works um but i mean that's straight from the creators and it's not something that's been told once it's something that's been told several times several times which lends more credence to there might be something there um but from what I have heard about the back of the book from those that are interested in it, and I'm not saying there's nothing there. I think there's definitely some nods um, to certain cities, no doubt. Um, I mean, it's undeniable. 982's in there. Lots of good stuff. Uh, the 222 on the, the plaster container, whatever that is. 
Um, there's a lot of good nods back there, but I haven't heard from anybody, and I'm always open to it, now, of course. I'm always happy to listen, um, but I haven't heard any good, uh, solid, this is going to help you solve a puzzle. Well, here's what okay. I would here, – here's something I would love to do, just if I could interject, and I'm so sorry. If somebody – I can't tag people in the comments for some reason. Facebook's being weird tonight. But if somebody would let Carly Perales know to watch the stream, like, right now, like, go back and rewatch it for right now, what I would love to do – I know he has a, a back-of-the-book group where – you guys just – people just talk about the back of the book. And what I would love to do is get a group of people together who are knowledgeable and sort of like not the kind of people who are like this is one – and just beat, try to beat one idea down people's throats, but, but who are exploring the back of the book in a, in a creative and sort of um, exploratory way. I would love to get a couple of those people on one of these and just talk about it because it's, it's, a, it's a thing that should be looked into and it's not looked into enough. And I think it's because everybody is so scattered – when it comes to searching in the back of the book and everybody's so like, I don't, I don't know how to put it, but there's no real, there doesn't seem to be organization and there doesn't seem to be any um, teamwork. Yeah. Right. Okay. At least from the outside. But I would, I would love to get to get that together to just sort of put forth some of the really good ideas that have been found and just, you know, kind of drum up some conversation. Okay. Right. So my, my take on that is that, that last bit there, I'm wholly in agreement with, yeah? I think that would be a good thing, to have a dedicated, like, you could have a video stream much like this, where we yeah. basically focus on them, a bit like a book group, but you're focusing on a, a couple of fair folk, you know, three Fine. fair folk or something, or four yeah. of them, and then you, you can do, because there's 75, you, there's lots of material there. So you, you would then sort of, like, try to just, like, bounce ideas off each other in that respect. And I, maybe here's not a good a good way to do it, but there's yeah, somewhere we can just like record everyone's ideas and put them in a spreadsheet and you know and credit everyone who's like said this thing, this thing here, you know, and somebody's you know taking yeah. notes so everyone, and then we can share it all and that sort of thing. So it's some something that where we've got um, yeah that 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 kind of thing happening, yeah. But like I say, in a digestible small thing because it's where, it's a huge where we're thing. focused yeah where we're focused, yeah. we're focused on, on that and we, right and we're and we're not yeah. all drinking and, because and, dude yeah. I, let, let me tell you all of us I, are drinking yeah. yeah we're all drunk um i know it, bradley is hammered and it's like it's not gonna okay but i do sign <laughs> yeah. that being said i want to share something with you okay, okay. now well. i know we're i'm like i am not a i'm not really a I, i'm a front of the book ish guy definitely yeah. back to the book you know like okay but um if i may so you've certainly looked at alibi elf um well, I've looked at or them. or you know okay right you know of alibi elf and you know mm -hmm. of you know of the ge on the briefcase uh there's a g pages. yeah which so, page is alibi elf? i know i mean I, it's if you can just uh, look at it oh 127 127 okay okay 127 yeah, is yeah. alibi elf and it's the it's birdman G. of alcatraz yeah right because there's a this thing is falling apart there's a bird and yeah. there's an alcatraz guy the yeah. window is kind of interesting right yeah. um and there is a his lawyer has a ge g dot yeah. E dot on yep. his briefcase. Yep. Which, no clue. I, I I've actually looked into lawyer, San Francisco lawyers besides Melvin Belli, uh, the famous one. I don't know. Um, I can't find out what, what what he's going for with GE. So I started looking through the rest of the back of the book. Yep. Right. And I found nomenclature. G E page one eighty two. One eighty two. And I'm sorry for doing this to people who I've, I think I've told George this before, but I don't know that I've shared this that, um, that much. Okay. Anyway, long story short, yeah. the first paragraph is uh, in nomenclature on page 182 is infesting yeah. the ivy towers mm -hmm. of high Mandarin academies um, and cluttering the gutters of low slum Ar Argo, Argot, uh, littered as they are with dropped G's and H's. Where is there a G and an H in the image for San Francisco? Yeah. Uh, right? And then it goes on to talk about, and then it says High Mandarin Academies. Um, so anyway, as much, you know, as I 
have been not a naysayer, but just not a super hardcore believer of the back of the book. Mm. That one I thought was kind of interesting. What does the GE stand for on the briefcase? It took me to nomenclature, et cetera, et cetera. Very much San Francisco-esque um, yeah. in that, in nomenclature. Well, yeah, the that's easiest that's way to get, I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. I was going to say that the, the, one of the the the, the um, assignments. Well, there's two two things that I wanted to try and do when I was going through the thing. General ones were first of all to try and tie down certain fair folk to the the cities or the puzzles or you know the, the image or the verse or mm -hmm. the, the locations. Okay, and then obviously at the back of the book, there's there's at the very back of the book they have like you know um origins and whereabouts of the fair for people 221 page and it goes oh it's um oh sorry two yeah two 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 um like um Ohio two, two, and 222 uh, the next one origins and whereabouts yeah and and yeah 221 and it goes oh it's in in you know yeah. these places and uh um some of them say ohio and you know, um <coughs> right and that kind of thing and it's like new york and um you know so there's places ontario so you know, you've got ones that are like, I've got like a direct link of saying, hey, they originate here. Maybe that's to do with that. There's also, as you said, I mean, like that would be an example of the nomenclature would be like tying to, to San Francisco. Exactly the kind of thing you go through each of them. Because I had a notion that maybe, you know, like, um, I mean, you said that there would be 12 linked, George, but maybe there's like, there's an even amount. So that would be about six or seven because there's 75 fair folk. Yeah, but... Right, so go, there's a small there's a small link to that one because they because the text they can change they can they can go they can get the the, the submission and go well i'll we'll edit in a uh, you know a little bit here which ties it to this thingy and it doesn't really change the text and if the the writers are okay with that which they probably will be because it's for a you know it doesn't matter that much they, they probably get to review it and go yeah that's, i mean that's yeah fine. Maybe, just, you know, and you, can use, and you can go well these are these these are all sort of linked to these things and uh, maybe something falls out of that. Uh, the other thing was the letters, yeah, because there are obviously clear letters. The famous one being um, the, the the beam that's the H uh, with the, underneath the train for which river one it's called. I can never remember which ones they're called, but the the one with the construction crew and like the trains at the top of it. Yeah, there is. We, we we all know that one, yeah. Well, yeah, I had this notion that um, in fact there are some of them have multiple letters um and uh or possibly there are letters stroke stroke hidden in a word and the hidden letter might be the one that you have to look at yeah but i still go back to that doesn't really it doesn't help you it doesn't help you at all if you collect Is that all, a, yeah that it, 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 could be an it only helps you it only helps you if you know the answer because it, it could be an i because it is an i beam yeah. and what's the difference between houston and indianapolis like yeah. or you, you you have no idea unless you already know the answer like it seems like you're create it's almost like jeopardy it, you're creating a question for an answer you already know if that makes sense no, well no 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 i mean i mean like i mean like, um, like in that in that picture the job goblin which is page 198 if people don't uh, um if you look at the uh, the wrench that's underneath the high beam it's got a letter c in it if you turn it upside down possibly you know some of these things definitely have letters the the right. um the um the, the 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 one with the stylus devil is it stylus devil or whatever? what's it called the one that's on the, the turntable record turntable that's yeah. the stylus uh, devil is it uh, uh that's got a letter a in it i think so uh, here's something is, so yeah you, you go around and collect all the letters and maybe something falls out of it because that's what happened in masquerade they collected all the letters and then they, they, you know some stuff and even if it just like going points <laughs> to the cities and stuff then you can go oh well there's a clue and that was you know we don't know we don't need it but it's nice that it, you know it, it it explains that the back of the book is more important and that people were right that to, to have more vested in it and there might be stuff that falls out that you don't know i mean uh, like bradley said and one of the other notions i i um that came off there the was that you send the, the two the two panels of text yeah, and thus the, there might be some sort of clue mechanism with like, because words are split and hyphenated and maybe you take one part of the word, you know, that happens a lot more when you when you condense the, the, the column. Yeah, um, maybe that's it. Just so here, here's something I just noticed that that's really interesting. Um, I've never noticed this before. If you turn to page 121, it's 121. the, 121. It's the, it's the illustration for Poultrygeist. Poultrygeist, yes. So earlier in... 
earlier in this discussion, we were talking about um, when was the beginning of the book completed? When was uh, when were these illustrations done? And I've never noticed a dated Perard drawing in here, but on page one twenty one, this illustration from Poltergeist is dated nineteen eighty one by Perard, which would have so, so most likely been after everything was well, buried. If you go like uh, like four four pages above that to page one seventeen. There's a bunch of magazines, like magazine covers, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're from like August of '81 or something, or August. They're from August of '82. They're only from a couple of months before the book was published. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that one of the things is that the, uh, with the the sketches and stuff, that's a lot more amenable to having clues placed in them. I agree. You can, you can, you can, you can just. You know, put whatever you like in with the, the the set pieces and stuff. That's a lot harder, but I I wouldn't rule it out. In fact, I, you know, I I, uh, I would look for something there. But um, but yeah, the sketches you go. Oh, that's a sketch that might have letters in. It's like you see that the kindergartens, which is one page before that. There's a I was going to say that the the word danger is written on the the box of TNT, but the R is hidden. So maybe the R is important, or maybe the D A N G. Danger. Yeah, um you. so uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you for getting that um so uh yeah i mean a common argument with the back of the book is the um, against the back of the book is that it was a project that was being completed before the treasure hunt was even a thing um but seeing these dates kind of well that creative. doesn't really that doesn't really include the art because right that's what i'm saying yeah yeah so so being that some of this art is clearly dated um after things would have been buried um with yeah. credence to that there's a possibility that there's clues I mean, in here given that the art was created by the people who made the puzzle <clears throat> like you, if you're going to convince me of anything in the back of the book it's that the that the drawings contain clues but I, i'm not i'm not going to be sold on like this thing's curved so it has to be a c you know mm. it should be it's got to it's going to have to be something bigger and really like we should be able to find things we don't already know and so far, no one has found anything in the back of the book that helps find anything we don't already know. You know, I, like I, I have, yeah. I have, but I'm not saying until I release it. Uh oh, well, then you know, but I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, so I'm looking for the, lots of like, other things. There's lots of keys in the, in the secret, so I'm happy to like explore some of the other things that I haven't think yeah. I've found. You know, that way there's less argument as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. If there's going to be some kind of a code, though, the instructions should be in the puzzle. Should be somewhere. Theory. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, if it the, the instructions for Masquerade were in Masquerade and the, like, yeah. Sunday newspaper hint. But um, yeah. if but then again, we go back. We were talking about this earlier. He was no master puzzle maker. Um, but I would hope that he put the instructions in the puzzle and that that's what people should be looking for first is to try to find the direction that tells you to bring together letters from something, right? Like so mm -hmm. how, what cryptic way could right. that information be conveyed to us to let us know that that's what we're supposed to do as opposed to just seeing letters and trying to go to um to try to go backwards in yeah way. i mean there's no <clears throat> kind of like your no. reference to a lesson though he yeah there's no there's no better way to uh convince everybody that there's something back there than to find the directions first i totally agree with that like if we can if there's something if there's something there or somewhere it, within this whole thing that can lay out like chris was saying the where to where to connect these things or how to do it um i mean the I'm paintings and the verses have instructions right they at least have instructions on how to start wed the painting with the verse that's the first thing you got to do it mm -hmm. it spells that out pretty clearly right so why wouldn't the back have instructions well, well actually, I'll, I, I'll say i'll say it this way so we know for a fact that um that JJP put things in the images, um, the, the actual paintings that uh, Byron Price did not want there and edited after the fact. I mean, we know that. So is it possible that there are things in these images that survived that Byron Price didn't catch 
possibly, who knows, um, were they intended to be used to solve the puzzle? Like, were they needed? No. Could they help? Possibly. Um, I am not against using a Game Genie on Nintendo. Um, I am not against finding extra hints in the back of the book. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Unless it takes you down this rabbit hole that you don't want to be in because it's already complicated enough. That's the as thing long, that scares me. Well, well, yeah, as long as you well, enjoy well, the rabbit hole, I'm not against it. it. As long as you don't force anybody else into the rabbit hole with you, I'm cool with it. That's <laughs> correct. That's the thing that gets yeah. me. It's people want to pull everybody else into the rabbit hole with them. You know, I, I don't enjoy your adventure. Putting, don't make me come along. <laughs> I don't mind putting the lotion on the skin, but don't put me in a hole and bring me the lotion in a basket. Well, is this is getting people to do a stream about the back of the book, pulling people into the rabbit hole? Am I leading people down a a dark path. <laughs> no, I, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't think so. You're just showing your ideas. You know, and that's what this is about. Like, it's yeah. like, you know, half of it is this stuff is just ignored. There's, there's definitely, I mean, there's obviously clues in there. There's definitely nods to things. I mean, You've like, seen them. Yeah, I mean, it's there. I, but whether there was not, you know, a bit more. What gets me is every time somebody says that, every time somebody says there's obviously stuff in the back of this book, all I can think of is like, you're legit calling Byron Price a liar. You just are. Mm -hmm. Well, well, Byron Price they, lied at times. I, I know, but like <laughs> as a publish as a publisher, if you put out a book and you say half of this book doesn't fucking it doesn't matter to you, like you're not gonna lie to people about that. You're just not. No, I half I of agree. this book is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, it's not supposed <laughs> to be. The is that what he said, or did he say puzzle? Absolutely. Right. How did he say it? He said that you you should you only really need a verse and an image. He didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, and then the rest of them were in like news articles where it was like the fair folk, which has no imp no impact on the puzzle whatsoever. That kind of stuff. All right. All right. No intended. Okay. Doesn't mean it's not there. It does. Yeah, um, I, I don't think it said intended. I think it was very. Right. It has no impact right. on the puzzle. Right. Well, That's what I'm I telling you. It, he would have said it, that if it wasn't intended. That was his intention. <clears throat> okay. Doesn't mean it's, it's not page there. 181. Yeah, which is the Hounds of News. The typewriter, the top of the typewriter is a giant letter C. <laughs> and it, it is. And, you know, they've, they put stuff in. <laughs> they put stuff in. Because they right, but what does that mean? What, what does it exactly. mean? Exactly. Well, it's a component. Or it's the yeah. top of a typewriter. They look like a C. It's, it could be all it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, letters are curved. Lines are curved. Typewriters are curved. But I, I mean, there's just, there's just too many. There's too many sort of things. I mean, when you see like a C, I can understand that you go, that's like a, that's a curve. I'm going you know, to let Bradley do Sunday fun day with the back of the book. I would just yell so, at him. <laughs> well, this, this is interesting. So I'm just randomly just like flipping the pages because I'll, I'll be honest. I read the back of the book once and I was like, yeah, okay, well, that was oh, a horrible read. Oh, yeah, um, but uh, at the bottom of page 94 um, uh, for Mind Boggles, there's an arm reaching out of TV and it says, an Ohio Mind Boggle. Whispering yes. seductively through not adjust your mindset. It straight up calls out Ohio. That's interesting. It says, it says that at the very back where it, it links the, the mind boggles to like the uh, area of concentration, New World, and it says Ohio. So it says yeah. it there. So that's interesting. I don't know. List it. I'm so, just yes, on here. So some some places are, are direct, you know, uh, 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 to fair But whether some of them are just completely neutral or whatever, it's good. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, I have to go. I'm not saying stop. I've got oh, no, to serve. I, yeah, no, we got to call our okay. 10 o'clock marker. If we don't count 10 o'clock yeah. every night, then we'll mm. just be on here forever. Yeah, and Rachel gets <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming to Sunday Fun that Day. That was fun, guys. It was fun. It was, it was super fun. fun. Next uh, Sunday, links to your the band. rule is no sleeves. No sleeves next Sunday. No you sleeves cannot come next on. Sunday. If you're right. wearing sleeves, you cannot come on. All right. And everybody has to have guitars in the background. Will the violin that's just, count? That's all I got. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you guys fun, have guys. a good night. Yeah. See ya.